Hello. Today I want to talk to you about our all-wheel drive systems in our SUVs and vans. The reason I want to talk about this is because a lot of times I see customers talking to salespeople and they'll ask, well, does this have all-wheel drive? The salesperson will say yes, and that's it, they move on. There's no value in that whatsoever. Let's try to slow down a little bit and explain exactly what our all-wheel drive systems do. First system I want to talk about is featured on your RAV and your Highlander. Literally, take a piece of paper and show the customer what it does. And the first thing you want to do is write down the name of the all-wheel drive system. And in this case, it is Dynamic Torque Control All-Wheel Drive. The reason I like you to write out the name is because once something has a name to it, it sounds more valuable. So write out the name. The next thing you want to do is draw this. Very easy to do. And then roll into the explanation. So for instance, if you're driving around in your RAV or Highlander and it's a bright, sunshiny, dry day, most of the time you're going to have 100% of the power going to the front wheels and no power going to the rear wheels. However, I can get up to 50% of the power going to my rear wheels in three different conditions. And here's what they are, and you write them down. Number one is wheel slippage. My front wheels detect any slippage at all, instantly I'm going to get up to 50% up to of the power going to the rear wheels. Number two is hard acceleration. So even on a dry day, if I'm going to stop light, light turns green, I put my foot to the floor, I can get up to 50% of the power going to my rear wheels. Why? Because it's an anticipation of a loss of traction. And my third scenario is hard cornering. Some people do not know that an all-wheel drive vehicle handles better than a two-wheel drive vehicle. So if I'm thrashing my RAV or Highlander around curves or around turns, I can get up to 50% of the power going to my rear wheels. Think about it. If I'm going around a curve and I have power coming from the back of the vehicle as well, it's going to help push that vehicle through that turn and help it corner much, much better. Now I've said a couple of times up to 50% of the power. Let me tell you exactly what happens. Up in front of the vehicle, you have what's known as an ECU, electronic control unit or a computer. And that ECU sends an electronic signal to an electromagnetic coupler. Since this connection is controlled by a computer and it's electronic, it's instant. So as soon as the vehicle determines it needs all-wheel drive, instantly power is sent to the back. There's no wheel spin. There's no waiting for any hydraulic pressure to build up. It just happens. And I've said a couple of times up to 50%, but you don't always get 50% of the power going to the wheels. Sometimes you may get 90 up front and 10 to the back, or 80 in the front or 20 in the back, or 70 in the front, or 30 in the back, so forth and so on, for a maximum of 50 and 50. So what this is saying is literally this vehicle, or these vehicles, are going to give you the exact amount of all-wheel drive you need at any given time without you or your customer having to do anything. Basically, this vehicle just helps you become a better driver. Now, doesn't that sound better than just saying, yeah, it's got all-wheel drive? But I'm not done yet. There's a button that changes this up a little bit, a button you're going to find by your left knee in the driver's seat in a RAV or in front of the gear shift in a Highlander, and this button looks like this. And that is your all-wheel drive lock button. If I hit this button in my RAV or my Highlander, it's going to lock it into all-wheel drive with 50% of power in the front, 50% of the power in the back, up to 25 
miles per hour. So let's say my driveway isn't shoveled or plowed yet, my street isn't shoveled or plowed yet, or I'm just getting stuck in the snow. I can hit this button and I get full-time all-wheel drive up to 25 miles an hour. If I hit 26, I still have all-wheel drive, but the vehicle is going to determine how much power I'll get to my rear wheels. The next button that you'll find in the RAV that's going to change up the all-wheel drive system is the sport button. When I hit the sport button in a RAV, not only is my steering going to feel a little bit tighter, not only is my accelerator pedal going to be more sensitive, not only are the gear shifts going to change to help that car feel quicker, it's also going to change my all-wheel drive system in a RAV because when I do put it in sport mode, remember, an all-wheel drive vehicle handles better than a two-wheel drive vehicle. So every time I turn the steering wheel at all when I'm in sport mode on a RAV, a minimum of 10% of the power will go to the rear wheels. Maybe more depending on what I'm doing with the vehicle. Now I don't have this button in the Highlander and that's because the Highlander is defaulted to sport mode. It's always in sport mode. In fact, when you are driving a Highlander, XLE or a Limited, in that vehicle information display in the center of the gauge cluster, you can actually see an illustration of this occurring as you drive the car. Still very, very cool. Two vehicles I want to add to this are Venza and Sienna all-wheel drive. Those two vehicles have a similar system, and that's known as active torque control all-wheel drive. Does the same as all of this. All of this is identical with active torque control. The only thing you don't have to talk about or remove is the all-wheel drive lock and the sport mode. Other than that, it's identical. So now you can discuss all-wheel drive systems and exactly how they work in the RAV, Highlander, Venza, and Sienna. Please take the time, slow yourselves down, do this illustration for your customers. It's going to work wonders. Any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thanks.